Hey folks, welcome into Pro Football Ireland. As we get ever closer to training camp, which starts very soon, uh, delighted to be joined, not just for guests, we'll introduce in a second, Michaela, good to see you again. We're, we're getting there, we're getting closer. Uh, Matt Hamilton is our guest. Now, if you, if you have not seen Matt before, where have you been? The guy is literally everywhere at the moment. He is on Up and Adams, which is obviously on Fangio TV, and obviously different places as well. We will link Matt in the socials below. Matt, it's it's great to see you again, man. It feels like Phoenix was like five minutes ago, yeah? I know. It's great to be back with you. I appreciate you having me on. And uh, yeah, lots happened since last time we talked. <laughs> I've never seen a man, for, for anyone listening to this or watching this, I have never seen a man as busy that week. So <laughs> f- fair, fair play. And it, it was great fun. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm sure we can talk about that in a different podcast. But it's, it's crazy. It's just, it's just the... Um, it's like the life of the NFL. It's the life of the league where it just it that's gone. The draft comes, it goes, and and now we're suddenly almost here. And and, and I know you guys are currently working in the background on the next season of your show, and it's hopefully a chance for you to get a little bit of downtime. I guess while we're here now, um, we're in the middle of July at the moment ish. Uh, what has been the main thing that stood out to you this off season? Like outside of Aaron Rodgers, that, that that's the obvious answer. But what has been the big sort of story for you this off season? Um, I think you know, just seeing now. I mean, the biggest thing we focused on over the last couple of weeks is is seeing some of those star players out there, like a DeAndre Hopkins, and and having that quality of a player on the market still at at this juncture of the off season. It makes it exciting. It, it, it kind of carries us through a little bit, which it, this time, which is usually which can be adult time. Um, you know, getting excited, having that speculation about where, where a guy like that is going to land. Uh, obviously, Dalvin Cook entered that conversation as well. Uh, so anytime you get a couple big players like that that have the potential to, you know, be game-changing acquisitions for some teams, uh, that definitely makes things exciting. So as people may know, the first season of Up and Adams just wrapped. And how have you found, just out of curiosity, moving on from Good Morning Football and working with Kay Adams um, at FanDuel on that, on that show? It's been it's been re-energizing, honestly. It was uh, it was really hard to leave Good Morning Football. I, I love that show. I still love that show. I love all the people I worked with. And uh, it was a hard decision. Uh, but I'm, I'm so happy I made the leap. It's, it's been re-energizing getting to start something from the ground up again, like we did with good morning football. Uh, I think it was, it was a fun challenge to undertake and especially getting to work with Kay again. Um, obviously she's fantastic. Uh, and the support that FanDuel has given us to, to do the show the way that we want to do it, um, and make it our show. And, um, yeah, and all the guests that we've been able to get, it's been it's been such a fun experience, and it really has been. It's been a lot of work, but it's been re-energizing to be able to really craft our own thing from the ground up again. You just mentioned there, you just touched on the guests, which is actually my next question. Um, you've had a lot of serious guests on Up and Adam, especially when Up and Adams, especially when you were in Phoenix. What who has been your favorite guest so far on the show? Oh man, it's hard. I don't want to single anybody out. Uh, Buddha Baker was phenomenal. He was, uh, he was one of our favorites. Um, just ripping tequila shots at our, at our up and Adams bar that we had on set. Um, for me personally, I think the most special though, was actually the last guest that we had, uh, before we went on this little break. And that was Chase Daniel, because I worked with him as a student coach at Missouri, uh, from 2006 to 2009, he, of course, has been in the NFL now for 14 years. So to get to reconnect, to get to actually do a segment together live on the air uh, was a pretty special kind of full circle moment for me uh, because he was such a huge influence in in my life. And, and I learned so much from him. And I guarantee you, I would not be doing any of the stuff I'm doing today if it wasn't for the time that I had working with and learning from him some serious guess I mean even from memory was it Justin Herbert was on during Super Bowl week and like that yep. whole thing was for like you, you gotta imagine for people listening it's going Michael will you shut up and stop harping on about this but like you're coming like you know Michael is in Dublin I'm in Ireland where it's like the countryside and you suddenly end up and you're in this massive room and there's this big massive like um set and Pat McAfee's yeah. on and you are on in the morning and some of the guests you're like is this actually is this actually happening right now? So it was it was great it was great fun and obviously Matt it was great to see you and we uh, 
appreciate yeah. your support you know obviously just for fans internationally and not just ireland so i appreciate it man we're, we're, we're here to talk and we're going to talk now a bit about the jaguars because they're a team that we should probably focus on more because they have got marketing rights in ireland but more so they're playing two games in london this year not just one week to week as well um you know let's let's look at them was there anybody in the draft that maybe stood out to you for for just in terms of who just in terms of who they picked up man like obviously they went and they got a bit of um protection which I, I know Michaela will talk about in a minute but they went from getting the first overall pick last season to getting to that division around last year and after that incredible game against the Chargers were you surprised just overall last season with how much they got better because even when they were in London and we seen them in the flesh they were quite poor and I don't think a lot of people thought that they were, that they were going to get as far as that yeah, I was surprised because you saw the signs that they were turning things around and I, and I felt really positively about this team, you know, but it was the type of thing where, oh, in a year or two, they're going to be really good. I didn't expect it to all come together mid-season like it did. It was it, it was one of the best stories we've seen in the NFL in recent years, that, that turnaround and that dramatic comeback to win the AFC South. Uh, but as far as the draft goes, um, yeah, adding an Anton Harrison – uh, beefing up that offensive line a little bit, uh, I think was was really important, especially after losing Jawan Taylor in free agency to Kansas City. Um, and the other guy that jumped out, it wasn't, you know, you didn't think of it as a position of need because they have Travis Etienne, but they go in the third round and use, you know, a fairly premium pick on a guy, Tank Bigsby, uh, out of Auburn, who is a, was actually the first college prospect uh, guest that we had on Up in Adams, um, for the NFL draft. And in addition to being a fun personality and, a, and, you know, a great guy and a fantastic guest, he is a tough, hard-nosed runner. And, you know, we saw some great things at ETM last year, obviously, like essentially his rookie year after missing uh, his entire first season with that injury. Uh, but, you know, I think he's also the type of guy you don't want to put the entire workload on him. You don't want to give him 400 plus touches. So I think we're going to see Bigsby be a significant factor in this offense next year as well. And just you touched on there what the who the Jags have drafted. Is there anyone else kind of do you think there's any other positions they need to beef up at this moment in time, whether it be through free, free agency or anything like that? Yeah, so I think I'd still like to see them add a little bit more in this pass rushing rotation. Arden Key was was a huge factor for them last year uh, in some big spots coming off the edge. He's in Tennessee now. They haven't really replaced that role. Um, and uh, there's still a guy out there that they're pretty familiar with, Unique Ngakwe. I don't know if he's willing to accept a role as a rotational pass rusher right now, but Obviously, that would be a fantastic fit and a, and a great homecoming for him, having been on that 2017 a team that made it to the AFC Championship game uh, in Jacksonville. But, um, but yeah, I think just adding a few pieces, depth pieces on that defense, we saw them take some strides last year. I think the offense is going to be explosive, uh, especially with Calvin Ridley entering the mix now. But I still think that defense, they're kind of a bend but don't break defense last year but it's hard to win games against teams like Kansas city and Cincinnati and Buffalo and the AFC um, in that style. They're going to have to, they're going to have to get a little bit better on that side of the ball. If they're going to enter that class of contenders in, in what is really a loaded AFC right now. Let's talk a little bit about Trevor Lawrence, because I think everyone has known his name since he came out of high school. He was always, projected to go first overall no matter what when he entered the draft and he's kind of been hailed as kind of the next Peyton Manning um do you think with the skills he has and the coaches he has around him now do you think he could become a player like Manning and be one of the greats in the near future I absolutely do and it was something I was I was second guessing early on last season because, you know, there were times when you look at him and yes, he has all the physical tools. He's a phenomenal athlete, has a cannon of an arm, uh, can make incredible throws, but it didn't seem like he was in command of the offense. It didn't seem like, you know, as far as processing, making the right decisions all the time, he was struggling at points, but we saw a complete switch over the second half of the year. It just all seemed to click for him. And he was, if you look at all of the metrics, all the statistics, he was one of the top three quarterbacks in the league over the second half of last season. And now you add a guy, 
a true number one receiver in Calvin Ridley, which he didn't have last year. It's a deep receiving core. It's going to set him up for success. And this Doug Peterson system is fantastic. And I think the struggles that we we're seeing, it was more a product of the disaster that was the Urban Meyer era and having to learn an entirely new system in his second year it was a lot put on his plate uh, from a mental perspective. And I think it just took him a little bit of time to settle in and feel comfortable. And we're seeing him now become that guy that he was touted to be. One of the things that probably isn't talked about, you know, in the U.S. at the moment, and, and, and I fully get it, is the fact that the Jags are playing, I, th- I think they're playing the Falcons uh, the first weekend of October. But then for the first time, they stay in London and they have, like, you're talking a good week and a half to be accustomed to the time zone, to the climate, etc. Not that it's, well, it, it, it's it's a little bit different from Jacksonville, but they actually get a chance to have a few nights sleep. Um. They play the they, they play the Bills in a neutral stadium. Now, don't get me wrong, Matt. There's going to be an awful lot of Bills fans there, and the stadium's great for NFL. Uh, I'm not sure if you had the chance to go over whenever Good Morning Football were over in London the first few times, but um, you know, I already could see the Jags going in there as just favorites for that game against the Bills, only because of that main reason that they're in that they're used to the market, but they have more time there now as well. Yeah, that's a great point, and I and I have been lucky enough to go over there twice now. And it is such an incredible experience. I mean, we we were there in 2018 at Wembley. It was Chargers, Titans, and then Jaguars, Eagles. And then I was over there with Good Morning Football uh, last year um, ahead of the Giants Packers game. So uh, yeah, no, the atmosphere. I don't think I don't think fans over here fully understand how incredible the atmosphere is over there and how great those fans are and how passionate those fans are. It really. It really is. Uh, those are two of the most special football experiences of my life being over there and seeing what those fans are like. Um, but I'm with you. I think it is a big, it is a big advantage for the Jags to be able to stay over there. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how that plays out. And I think we're only going to see more and more international games uh, going forward. Now they've been such a huge success. Uh, the market's there for it. And it's, it's been, it's been so much fun. I think it's really rewarding for these teams and and obviously for the fans over there. Now, later this season, when the season starts, we'll see Calvin Ridley introduced as a Jaguar, like you said, a true number one wide receiver. And obviously, Trevor Lawrence and Christian Kirk do have a great connection. Kirk caught for over a thousand yards. He had a couple of touchdowns. How scary do you think this Jacksonville offense can be this season? I think it can be really scary. And and I didn't mean to disparage Kirk at all. You're right. He had a, a phenomenal year last year. So I wasn't trying to, to put him down by any means. But uh, Calvin's a guy that we've seen go for 1,400 yards. And, and you know, he is, he is that go-to guy. And adding him to the mix is only going to make Kirk more effective because you have to pay attention to Ridley. Zay Jones was also really good last year for them. Uh, they have a lot of pieces and, and obviously hopefully get – Evan Ingram back in the fold on this franchise tag as well, or hopefully work out a long-term deal there. Um, But they have so many weapons now and they're so deep. I don't think the depth that they have in that group of receivers uh, really gets enough credit. And then ETN and what he can do in the passing game out of the backfield as well. It's, it's an absolutely loaded group. They've got a great scheme. uh, And I'm, I'm really excited to see it because now everybody's going to be feeling comfortable in that scheme as well, going into year two with Peterson. You're, you're bang on in terms of, of the whole international sphere. Like we, we want more games, but obviously one game is amazing to us. Uh, obviously, we, we'd love to have a game in Ireland at some point. Who knows? I, I will shout out a, a guy that you know very well, BJ Cassell, who was on chatting to me and Michaela a few weeks ago. He's he's trying to get out to Frankfurt. I, I pray that he does get out. It's going to be a great game, that Dolphins-Chiefs game. Go, going back to the Jags, Matt, um, looking at the AFC South overall, it's... <laughs> I understand that there's different divisions in the, in the AFC, especially that everyone's heavily focused on at the minute. But, you know, you've got a situation mm-hmm. where the Titans could go downhill, like not massively, but they could take a step back. We don't know what the hell's going on with Indianapolis. Like, Anthony Richardson could be in- incredible, or he could just be meh, or it could be a disaster. Who knows? And Houston, I feel like they're like I feel like they're building the house again from, from scratch, and they're putting the cement on the bricks, and eventually it will settle. But... Like surely this is, um, and I, I, I know Michaela is going to ask you finally just for your prediction at the end. But surely this is a year where you can see Jacksonville maybe take that next step in the division with repercussions long term because Chris Baller could be in trouble and the Titans could have long term effects there also. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the Jaguars have to be the favorites right now in the division. But I will say with Tennessee, they, they took that big step backwards last year. Tannehill's injury obviously just sent them completely off the rails um, and into that massive losing streak. But I wouldn't count them out just yet. I think that team really buys into what Mike Vrabel is selling. And I think they're a big factor in this DeAndre Hopkins race, too. If they get Hopkins in there, I think it really changes – that team and the way that we're going to perceive them going into this year, they still have some problems. I mean, that offensive line was, was abysmal last year. Uh, They had issues defensively, but you know, as much as I love Jacksonville and I love this Jaguars team, I don't think they're at that point yet where you can just start dismissing teams like the Titans who, who have been there and done that as well and uh, have had some great seasons. And I do think um, yes, while Houston is in the midst of a rebuild right now, they made a lot of sneaky good depth depth acquisitions in free agency. I think they got a lot better. They have a lot of talent on that roster. That secondary already, they had a top 10 pass defense last year, which a lot of people don't realize. And they're really young. All those guys are back. Uh, adding Will, adding a Will Anderson, adding a CJ Stroud. It's all going to depend on CJ Stroud. Um, but that's a team that I would not sleep on this year either. They're going to be a tough out. And, you know, there's always that team that sneaks up on everybody and nobody expects to get into the playoffs and finds a way to make it happen. I wouldn't be totally shocked if the Texans are that team this year. I know that's a little out there, but, um, but they have all those elements that you look for in a team that turns it around quickly. There's a social real Michaela for November, December. I love it. Love it. (laughs) I think you're very (laughs) fair in saying what you said about the Texans, because I don't think, people would have thought that the Jaguars would have got that far in, in the playoffs, especially since they picked first overall. It's it's just really kind of unheard of to go from the first pick to divisional round. But this year, what do you think their expectation should be for the fans? Do you think they could possibly go past the divisional round? Could they potentially go to Kansas City and win? Yeah, I mean, I think the baseline expectation has to be another division title and and another playoff win um but yeah i mean you get a guy like trevor lawrence you expect to eventually be pushing for conference championships and and as we talked about i mean this afc is just so loaded like if they're if they're in the nfc you're probably expecting this team to make a push to get to a conference championship game right now i mean you know the chiefs the bengals the bills i think are all going to be favored ahead of them to make it to that point uh but with all that talent and with a guy like Trevor Lawrence, I wouldn't count this Jaguars team out either. And I think, you know, it's a reasonable thing to think that they're going to be in the mix for one of those spots this year. Well, Matt, we appreciate you coming on. Like, look, at the end of the day, you're a busy man. You got stuff outside of this. You, you're a coach as well, which we could talk about as well, I'm sure at some point. But um, it, it's been a busy few months for you. It's been a busy year for you, just just for you guys. And just obviously a massive congratulations for what you do. And obviously not just with Kesha, but fa- just uh, just Fangio itself. So uh, continue, continue success from us. Um, and look, best of luck whenever the, the new season starts going to be interested to watch it because it's on at a friendly time for us and uh, certainly hold on the tequila shots in Vegas because next year I'm not on the clock and I will certainly be having a couple and I have, I'm taking whatever goodie bags I can get next year if you're there so thanks so much man for your time <laughs> thank you so so much for having me you do a fantastic job I'm so glad we got to meet uh, in Phoenix and and reconnect here so I, I appreciate you bringing me on and uh, look forward to, to doing it again sometime soon